insane And when you've done it, turn the page and do it all again Sunday evening, it's May. Good Lord, where did April disappear off to? It's a bit boomy in here. Let's turn the microphones down a bit. Good evening to Array of Emotions. Good evening to Riaco Music. Riaco Music says, how's it going? Um, Yeah, not so good, really. I think tonight will be a short show. I'm... Coming down with something, I've got ringing in my ears, so I can't really do much in terms of music at the moment, which is a pain. And I'm kind of blocked on lyrics and a bit bleh at the moment, to to be to be honest. Just various health issues, and uh, I've been trying to counteract them, believe it or not, by um, I dug out my old barbells to try. You remember last summer i had terrible trouble with my elbows with playing too much guitar don't want to go down that line this summer so i've been trying to build up my upper body strength i've got a pair of like six kilo dumbbells lying around so i've been using them and uh, i think it's rather upset either the cyst or the kidney stone in my kidneys because um, I've been having some side effects last week that kind of concerned me for a bit but they've disappeared so I think it was a very temporary thing but um, even so it, I'm definitely yeah it's not 100% anyway let's get on with things um, yeah a couple of odd things I uh, I got a copyright strike from Thursday's show, which um, really, really bugged me because, uh, and obviously I can't play the piece of music that um, my show, according to YouTube, has infringed, but the piece of music that I played that triggered the copyright algorithm's head fit was was this one which is the the thing that i did last last week which i'm blocked with i played it and i hated the vo the the vocals hated the lyrics i've kept the chorus but i've muted everything else and i said on thursday night show that um i'd probably add more guitar to it and probably a bit of um synthesizer and i've ended up adding timpani as well but uh, I'll, I'll play it you and then i'll tell you what the youtube track is that they think i've infringed and then after the show you can go and listen to it and go wtf so right this is um the current version of old habits which is me one four one four five blues progression
so that's my um, sort of work in progress version of that, which has a lot more guitars than it did. And it's got kettle drums on it. Uh, Ryako Music said, why'd you ditch the, the other vocals? And just all sorts of reasons. A, it was too low. I was singing it much too low. It was far too verbose. There were far too many words in the lyrics. And um, I just listened to it and thought, you know what? I, that That's really not good enough. I can do better than that. And it needed more guitars. And as Array of Emotion says, there's nothing more, nothing wrong with more guitars. So I've been in here most of the weekend staring at me lyric pad going, well, all right, if that's too verbose, what am I going to do? And I filled up an entire page with ideas. And yesterday afternoon, I was just sitting, you know what? I just, I'm just not getting enthused by this, that whatever I'm doing musically it what's on that page doesn't fit and I don't know what does fit at the moment so I'm just gonna step away from it for a few days and plus of course this is this is the track that that is giving me grief on YouTube and I'm not going to play it you but what you should look for is Fish Eye Blues by Serge Gangsborg apparently sounds like that track you just listened to, which is odd because that's a blues shuffle and it's not even a very good blues shuffle, but it's a one four five chord progression. Now, Edgy Corners, whoever they are, and they do not appear to be a, a record label, which is quite interesting because they've got pieces of music on their video list. This is so this is this is their video list, right? So Big Audio Dynamite? Nick Lowe? You know, the Beatles? Well, Pete Best, anyway. They've got some fairly fairly well-known names on their channel so you know a rare emotions were said you know they're probably copyright trolls and looking at the sort of stuff i mean there's lumpy gravy there's a lot of stuff on here which i'm thinking uh, you're really the copyright owner for that ray conniff apparently um this track by um, Serge Gansborg, although I think it's really a bunch of session musicians, not actually him at all. It's It sounds nothing like that track. So what the hell is going on? But um, I've disputed it and said in a polite way, did you actually listen to my track or watch how it was being done on my channel and uh, a rev motion says there was a lawsuit against a notable copyright troll a while back that stuff is crazy youtube's algorithm is just so easily exploitable i did see a few years ago a guy actually got a dmca takedown notice because he'd posted white noise on one of his YouTube videos. And apparently somebody had said, well, no, we've copyrighted white noise. No, you can't use it without paying us or, or letting us put adverts on your show. Just, so, I mean, to be frank, I am spending a lot of time editing these shows and putting them on YouTube, but, I have a feeling that if this does not pan out in my favour, and given that it's YouTube and given that they seem to have previous on this sort of thing, um, yeah, if if I lose the copyright strike, I'm just going to take my content off YouTube. And frankly, I'm not going to... Not only am I going to probably end up taking all the old shows off... Um, I'm I'm just not seeing any return on on the YouTube side of things at all, 
and the amount of work that I put in editing the shows down really um I can't justify so I'll probably I'll put tonight's show on and I'll put the shows I'll probably do the first year I'll archive on on YouTube but I think after then given this sort of thing going on um I'm just gonna do the twitch thing and um I'll just leave YouTube Look for the YouTube channel from Rick Beato. He talks about this a lot. I am very familiar with Rick Beato's What Makes a Song channel. And yeah, he has. Well, I mean, come on. He pulls famous rock songs to bits. So by the very nature of the show that he puts together, he has to play other people's music. So I'm I'm amazed that he even contemplated doing those shows on YouTube, frankly given that um the the way that youtube behaved but i mean you search for youtube is broken videos there's one guy who um basically saw his view counts just disappear and um youtube had basically stopped paying money because they said oh well you haven't got any views anymore because they'd got rid of them so it, there are some very strange things going on with YouTube and they are completely averse to transparency and openness in what goes on. Um, they do not reveal, obviously, their algorithms as to what makes a song or thing go viral. But um, reading up about it over the last week, well, since I got this copyright flag, it... Um, yeah, nothing about YouTube sounds good. So uh, let's stick with the nice Twitch people, shall we? And uh, we'll just... I'll, I'll probably just let the YouTube side of things die after I've reached show number 52, which will be a week on Thursday. Good Lord, where does the time go? Yeah. So... Yeah, it kind of took the wind out of my sails. And maybe that's the sort of stress thing for um, the reaction is, is me sort of being under the weather this weekend or just generally declining slowly and gradually and inexorably, but such is life. It's, uh, it's a bit of a bugger, though. However, what I uh, also did this week was I went back and I've I've remixed Doldrums again. You know, I was saying, oh, I'm not satisfied with it. Oh, that's not entirely perfect yet. And um, did my thing where I go to sleep at night no. with my headphones on. That was Ableton resetting its microphone feed, just in case it was not me belching, honest governor. Um yeah, I uh, posted on Twitter that, you know, who, who'd have seen last year at this time that I'd be doing orchestral arrangements of pop songs and eight-part harmonies. And Georgie, bless him, said, only eight. And um, I went back and checked. And as of now, it's, it's not eight, it's nine. So I have nine-part harmonies on the, uh, the play play out of this track now good evening mike tango charlie no you did not just miss a burp that was ableton doing its glitch thing when it loads and i don't know why it does it ah right slight no i'll play this version first and then and then i will have a discussion about something else that's been bugging me recently because it's all about things bugging me this week <sighs> and breathe this is called Doldrums, and it's what? Interesting noise. Why does Ableton always load at the last cursor position, Ableton, rather than at the beginning of the track, which is what I wanted? And breathe again. This track is called Doldrums. I know right now I should be writing. Tempted just to stay in bed Pretend the monsters that I'm fighting Only exist inside my head Can't find two words to string together 
so there we go nine part vocal harmonies on that and uh rather rather pleased because after the last show i was sitting in here doing something and listening to it thinking you know what there 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 should be a high vocal harmony on the end of that and um took me a while but eventually i just sort of came in here and sat down nailed it first take and i that doesn't happen so there you go and we're so for viewers who aren't aware of uh, mike tango charlie our friend nick has issued me several challenges on the stream in weeks gone by one of which was all right eight bit bit crush that sounds like fairly fairly recognizable what's one bit bit crush like and uh, rather than 44.1 kilohertz sampling what does four hertz sampling sound sound like so we've we've done all of these and mike mike tango has has hinted he has another another challenge for me that revolves around the film scott pilgrim versus the world so we shall see what transpires but sampling rates and such reminds me of the other thing that i've been doing this week and you remember i was talking about the complete audio six that i've got new audio interface well it's not new i bought it in july last year and worked fine until a few months ago it started doing this weird bit crushing thing as if on playback it was forgetting what the sample rate was of the sound that is coming out of my monitors and um as discussed on the stream on thursday evening a rave emotion says maybe it's something to do with the sample rates and i've taken a big leap in my recorded music and the system on here because since i started using daws i've been recording stuff in 16-bit and sampling it at 44.1 kilohertz because as transpired in the conversation that we had with mike tango jolly about sampling rates that is the sampling rates that you get for music that's recorded on a cd so rather than dithering or transposing between 48 kilohertz which is kind of the de facto default on pcs these days i set all my sound devices and everything else on the pc to 44.1 kilohertz and i was wondering whether that was affecting the performance of the um the stream and was contributing to the buffering problems that we've had incidentally how's the buffering going i'm just gonna go back to twitch inspector and see what it's saying no you're lying no streams in the last week what you're trying to pull so if we go back to twitch inspector there you go that was the wobble and uh frame rates dropping once or twice it's still a bit all over the place says array of emotions it is isn't it it's down to like 17 and a half so yeah not sure what's going on there but yeah so i've set everything including recording stuff music in ableton up to 48 kilohertz to see if that would clear the problem that i was getting with the the weird bit crush noisy stuff coming out of the oh excuse me oh dear i set everything to 48 kilohertz on the system to see if that would get rid of the bit crushed noise strangeness that was coming out of the complete audio six uh -uh. the stream literally paused as you said buffering i'm not joking says mike tango charlie oh dear i think we'll we'll have a short stream tonight then if it 
And it's funny, it was Sunday last time it went all pear-shaped as well, wasn't it? Yeah, so anyway, didn't affect the behaviour. So I've been making music in here, it was still going pear-shaped. So I rolled back the driver for the complete audio from 4.80 from 5 to 4.86 because I am not the only person experiencing these problems under Windows 10 according to the native instruments forum in fact the uh, the first reply that I got to my post about this on the native instruments forum basically said get rid of it return it get get a different audio interface they're rubbish and uh, I mean, it's not rubbish in terms of performance when it works, but um, that did not really inspire confidence in the uh, in the product, really, considering this was the product manufacturer's own forum. So, yeah, I mean, I, I got it in July. So can you return something after a year? Who knows? I mean, it was it was less than 200 quid so it was a significant amount of money but it was certainly not in the multiple hundreds of quids range so i'm thinking do i return it well it's still in warranty says a rave motion there is indeed that so um but all the people who've got this problem who've posted on the Native Instruments Forum, none of them have had the the things sorted out to their satisfaction. But yesterday I thought, well, it worked fine when I first, year, first bought it, which was last year. So what was the driver I was using when I first used it? quick riffle through me downloads folder on this system and it said driver version 4.82 zipped up so i thought huh. okay went into device manager stripped out all the references to the complete audio 6 driver um uninstalled the driver on the apps went through the registry because i'm sad and made sure there were no references in the registry to it, unplugged the box and then installed the 4.82 driver and then plugged the box back in and started using it again. And I have not encountered the problem since. So it's early days yet and I don't want to jinx it, he said, touching wood very, very enthusiastically. But I'm hoping that rolling back the driver and then rolling back the driver again may stop it doing the strange noises. And it's um, it's doing OK so far. I will keep you informed because I suspect I will be in here a lot over the next few days. The weather forecast for the UK is appalling for the next couple of days my phone beeped at me yesterday and said yellow warning of wind and torrential rain for bank holiday monday because it's a bank holiday and everybody wants to be in the garden doing their barbecues and, it, and that's not going to happen tomorrow and tuesday looks pretty awful as well Mike Tango Charlie says, I'm supposed to be going over a drink on Tuesday evening. Well, I hope you've got somewhere that's at least got a roof on it. But um, yeah, the weather's weather's not nice. Rover Motion says, let's hope it doesn't auto update. No, it does not. Um, you have to go and download the latest driver from the website, which I will not be doing until I'm pretty darn sure that uh, they fix the problem and this seems to be the way you know if if a driver's not broken these days i'm more inclined to just leave things as they are rather than trying to fix them fix something that is absolutely perfect as it is i think the beer garden has a tarpaulin says mike tango charlie yeah those things when they fill with water um, you have to remember that a cubic metre of water weighs a metric tonne. 
So uh, stand near the edge of the tarpaulin rather than in the middle where all the water collects and bows down. Yeah, been in a beer garden where that has actually happened. It was uh, hilarious, but it could have been quite nasty actually as well. Yeah, so I think I may have fixed the audio problem on the uh, on the complete audio but we'll we'll see this week i will i might just put as riaka music said might just put that one oh excuse me might just put that one on hold for the for a few days and let my uh, subconscious mull it over for a bit and do some new pieces of music instead all at 48 kilohertz sampling rate and see if see if my ears can notice the difference i've got a few uh, albums downstairs uh i think mainly rush albums i think i might have a copy of tubular bells as well that's 96 kilohertz rather than 44.1 kilohertz because it's on blu-ray audio and um my goodness me um, i could hear the difference and a lot of people have said, no, no it's your, the ears, ears can't hear sample rates beyond, you know, half whatever the sample rate is. So yeah, it's, it's to do with the maximum frequencies. So by rights, if you're the highest frequency you can hear, if you're a small child, is, is round about 20 kilohertz. So the sampling rate, double that, 40 kilohertz. And they nudged it up to 44.1 for safety's sake for CDs. And, um, yeah, so theoretically, according to how biologists think the ears work, you shouldn't really be able to tell the difference. But some guys did a blind audio testing and played pieces of music that had been recorded at 44, 48 and 96 kilohertz. And there's even some albums now coming out on 192 which is, I mean, the audio sizes of those files is ridiculous. You need a memory stick just for like two tracks. And but people were going, yeah, that that's that's the ninety six kilohertz one, and they were right. So the, the hearing is a weird thing, and psychoacoustics is a weird thing, and the sort of tricks that you can do with so Aphex Twin, Richard D James classic example he is not just a guy who does synthesizer tracks because if you play them on a decent system he does things with the audio signal with psychoacoustics that for instance make the bass go around your head so I, he does a lot of very very interesting audio tricks with psychoacoustics and uh, i have a lot of aphex twin Mike Tango Charlie says, my ears tap out well below 20 hertz, sadly. Oh, like binaural stuff. L yeah, in well, it's even weirder than the binaural stuff. Um, I was it? I follow a number of bands on Facebook and one band was recording a session. It may have been Snarky Puppy and uh, they were recording a, uh, a session in a sort of socially distanced audio space but there's a binaural head stuck right right in front of the kick drum and i thought oh yeah that's gonna that's gonna give an interesting experience first time hearing binaural was a revelation it is quite something more stuff should be recorded that way indeed i uh, was i don't know if you've i mean you've heard of the stick player tony levin right Tony has released a number of solo albums over the years and he recorded one in full binaural called From the Caves of the Iron Mountain and it's recorded, strangely enough, in a cave by a genius engineer, audio engineer called Chad Blake and that's Chad T-C-H-A-D and uh, the album starts and the binaural head is being walked into the cave and you can hear the ambience change there there's um because it's near where tony lives there are some geese on the lake 
outside the front of the cave entrance and you can hear them receding into the background as the recording engineer walks into where the session is being take, taking place and there's drums and uh, trumpet and um, Tony playing bass and stick. A glorious, glorious album, but, you know, has to be listened on headphones to get the binaural effect because you then totally separate the audio that's going into that ear and the audio that's going into that ear in a way that you do not get when you're listening to or mixing stuff on monitors because I've got my two KRK monitors about there on the shelf that um, the VDUs and everything. I could show you, can't I, to a certain extent. So, uh, which camera? Uh, may I? I haven't got it on me button there. I'll do it here. So there's there's one of me monitors there. So the thing is that the sound from that monitor can not only go to my left ear, but it also goes round me head and goes into that ear, and it also goes to the wall and bounces off the wall and comes back to that ear. So I am getting audio from both speakers in both ears. Mike Tango Charlie says B and W. Boas and Wilkins. No, that's my system downstairs. These are KRK Rocket Fives. They're like the the Model T Ford of um of studio monitors. Uh Mel has a set uh most of the musicians that have home recording studios that i know have krks in them they they're quite bass um enthusiastic shall we say but they're, they're more or less flat they're certainly better than some of the other budget monitors um that are available uh, other brands are available but uh, I've had these for six or seven years and um, I really like them. Mike Tango Charlie says, can you recommend a good set of headphones? Well, the ones that I've got in here, strangely enough, are also made by KRK. There you go. These are 8400s. So it really depends what you want to use them for right so in terms of what i'm using in the studio i want closed back headphones so they're solid so basically when i put these on my head the sound reduction from outside is round about minus 35 db so it's quite severe and I can't hear the monitors now. All I can hear is is my my headphones. And that's also useful in reverse, because if I'm recording vocals and I've got the backing track coming through in my headphones so that I can hear what to sing against. Mike Tango Charlie says, are they wireless? No, no wired so I've, I've got a nice volume control here so i can turn them up or turn them down as as appropriate but they're very very good um they're very very good for um for reproducing audio and i've had donkey's ears but these sennheisers which um I've got caught up on the guitar. So these these are what I sit at the synth in the, uh, late at night when I don't want to disturb anybody. These are open back headphones, so they're not as acoustically insulated. And these were like about a sixth of the price of the KRKs. But... Um, these are the most comfortable headphones that I have ever had. The sound's good, and they're, they're Sennheiser HD 515s. And 
these are so old that I've actually had to replace the ear pads in them. Because you can buy spares, so you literally just pull the old ones off and put new ones on. Because the foam rubber in the old ones had literally disintegrated. But I've got nice new foam pads in these. So, yeah, open back or semi-open. The the general verdict is that um, closed back don't give you the same bass response that um, that those Sennheisers will, because the the air is trapped inside the headphones rather than it being given a bit more room so that the very very low wavelength sound waves can uh, can work work their magic as it were. Reacher Music says, I set up my monitors with my new PC and now there's this buzzing sound. Didn't have this problem with a MacBook. Like a high-pitched buzzing. Mike Tango Charlie says, maybe interference from internal components. Reacher Music says, I'm using the same audio cables and interface. PC tower is under the desk. Hmm. That's, yeah, that's, that's worrying. There quite obviously shouldn't be a buzzing uh be interesting to know what frequency it was so if you can record it you can figure out what frequency it is that may give you hints as to what is causing the problem so one of the problems that i have with not so much with the g6 but i had with the g3 was that i use switch mode power supplies for a lot of my guitar effects because they're cheap and that's what comes with the effects unit and they can really really whine if the uh, signal path is not particularly clean dodgy sound card perhaps says mike tango charlie Riaco music says i've never heard my monitors make this sound before yeah they they show well clearly they should not be making that sound one of mine actually developed a buzz after i'd had it for about a week and uh, i had to send it back to the um i think it was dv 24 7 at the time and they sent it off to uh, to krk who fixed the problem and sent it back to me but um yeah i i wouldn't have thought that was the problem if you've had them for donkey's years they they should yeah i would say it's probably something in the computer maybe the power supply is is a bit wonky or yeah if it's high because if it's if it's a sort of 50 hertz buzzing noise that is normally a ground loop because that's what happens in here if i because i'm not i can't plug everything into one socket because i do not have the uh, the sort of extension lead that you would need to plug everything into one socket so i plug them into different sockets and i think they're on different earths in the house's wiring and you get this 50 hertz sort of on audio signals certainly through the guitar if i plug them into the audio interface and the mixer and the way you get around something like that is with a little di box and they cost like 20 quid and you just put the plug from or the cable from the from the amplifier instead of going out straight into the mixing desk you plug it into one of these little di boxes they're all plugged into me sort of rack unit down there so I could, i'm not going to get one out and show you but they're, they're about yay big and you just plug plug in the input on the input side and the output on the output side and the signal goes through but the mains buzzy noise does not oh god i hope not says uh, array of emotions mike tango charlie says 50 hertz hum yeah um but 50 hertz is obviously quite low and uh, a high-pitched whine yeah i uh, it could just be it's the sound of electricity says mike tango charlie it is yeah I mean, it may be um something to do with a, a power supply unit on one of mel's bits of out 
netball gear. I, I, I don't know what I would do. And this is, this is, you know, HFO's tip for isolating problems on your audio system is basically not just turn it all off and turn it on again, but disconnect as much as you can. So what I would do, I would disconnect the speakers from your mixer and then gradually start plugging things back in from the speakers back to your sound source until the whiny buzzy noise reappears because i would imagine with the speakers unplugged you'll get nothing um so another thing you can do is have the speakers plugged on switched on but have the pc switched off and then switch it on and um see if powering up your pc and presumably the audio interface as well creates the noise or not try unplugging the monitors from the audio interface it's one of these things just un isolate each each unit in turn and then add it back to the signal chain until the the whiny noise appears and then you can go aha that's what's causing the problem or somewhere upstream of that is causing the problem i guess we can start by unplugging everything but the interface and monitors said or it says array of emotions exactly that is what i would do and because um, the, they're powered, so they work on mains. So you can have the monitors themselves powered up, even without the interface. And uh, how many outputs has the interface got? Because the other thing is you could, oh, it's probably only just got the uh, one set of speaker outputs, isn't it? But if it's got more than one speaker output, uh, try a different speaker output. Also, uh, KRKs like balanced cables. So if you've got a balanced cable, it won't look like that. So you can always tell a balanced cable because it's got tip and sleeve if it's unbalanced. But there's an extra little component, a black component there on a balance cable. So it's tip ring sleeve on a balance cable, which is why they're known as TRS cables. And balance cables will also help you get a less buzzy sound um, in a lot of cases. But, and because the rockets will cope with a balanced, balanced output and I'm using them on the uh, the Mackie big knob I've got here. And I'm actually using XLR, the XLR sockets on the back of the rockets. Sockets, rockets, that's great, rhyming. I'm using all the same cables, says Riaco Music. Ah, uh, right, okay. Um, yeah, try, so, all right, here's a question for you. Is the Is the buzzy noise coming out of both speakers at the same time or just one speaker that's that's one one question that we need to is or one thing we need to establish because if it's coming out of both then i would say it's probably not the speakers that are the problem both at the same time okay right so it's not going to be the speakers that are the issue. So it's going to be something that's feeding the speakers that's the issue. So, yeah. Well, that's that's good, really, in a way. Because certainly when I powered these up and that one started buzzing, it was like, oh, good grief, what's happened now? So the fact that the fact that they're both doing it is is i would say a good sign because it means it's probably something less expensive further down the interface chain that's causing the problem but fingers crossed that you that you sort it 
I have a new monitor screen, so maybe that's it. Ah, is it? Has it got one of those sort of slab power supply units and a little DC twelve volt into the back of the monitor? Because um, I would lay money that's what's causing the whine. Because those those transformers there there's like a cheap way of stepping down to direct current things which is called the uh, switch mode power supply and there's the like sensible and reliable and expensive and noise free versions which is basically a much larger chunk which is proper transformer in it and uh, everything comes with switch mode power supplies now. So I would think that it is probably the transformer or the probably the the brick for the um, for the new monitor screen, because if it well, simple way simple way of testing that is have everything set up and then um, pull the plug for the monitor screens power supply out of the wall so that it's not getting power so you'll lose the picture and see if the wine disappears um i would think that will probably probably sort out what the problem is and I, it's, you can pick up power supplies i i have a i have a plastic crate down there that is full of nothing but um switch voltage variable voltage power supplies and uh i've not bought a new power supply voluntarily for about three years now because i've got so many of the damn things the g6 came with its own and it's a tiny little thing like that but so anyway um yes Fun and games with tech, eh? So I hope you managed to get that sorted. Uh, do let me know how the experiments go. I will continue to work on music in here, but I might might take tomorrow off. I'm, I'm just feeling I'd, I'd need a bit of a, of a slug day. A bit of a day, you know, under the duvet reading books, I think, might be tomorrow. Will do, says Rieko Music. Excellent. Glad to hear it. Okay, so Mike Tango Charlie, what's your challenge then? Because uh, you've you've said you've you've got a new challenge, but unless I missed it, um, what's what's our Scott Kil our, well, uh, What's our Scott Pilgrim challenge? And uh, yeah, not only does it have Captain America and Captain Marvel in it before they were famous, it also has um, an ex Superman in it, of course, as well, who is basically just playing to type. Good old Brandon Ruth. He should have done more Superman movies. He was good as Superman, I thought. He and isn't he coming back as Superman in one of these new DC, DC still perverted by frank miller's the dark knight and say oh yeah we need to be dark and edgy it's like no you don't marvel aren't dark and edgy look at guardians of the galaxy but uh, no we want to be frank miller mike tango charlie says it's based on the song i am sad so very very sad write a two second song okay you're on i will do that uh, the Rave Emotions not being particularly complimentary about DC's movie franchise at the moment. Which, I mean, frankly, there are some good DC movies out there, but they're all cartoons. The cartoon movies that DC do are superb. And uh, in this country, certainly, uh, it's on Netflix. There is a bonkers batman movie called batman ninja if you've not seen batman ninja you need to watch batman ninja it's i mean even for a batman movie it's pretty out there i'm not gonna spoil it but batman ninja i mean what 
what other encouragement do you need to watch the film? It is superb. It does not look like any other Batman movie you will ever have seen. Uh, I really, really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, I, I, that's definitely an HFO recommendation, that one. It's on Netflix over here. I'm sure you'll be able to track it down somewhere. I mean, it's Batman. It's bound to be out there somewhere. Forever Motion says, haven't watched Batman anything since those terrible Nolan movies. I kind of liked them. I mean, the having Alfred as Michael Caine was, or having Michael Caine as Alfred even, was um, was a, a masterstroke, I thought. And I did like the the sort of tongue-in-cheekness of it, of, of Lucius Fox quite clearly knowing exactly who Bruce Wayne w became during the night. But uh, just go, oh, you're going spelunking again, are we? But then, I mean, come on, Morgan Freeman. But uh, yeah, I, I actually have a box set of the, of the four Batman movies, the, the, the two Tim Burton ones, and then the, Oh dear, the really, really bad ones, the Joel Schumacher ones. And uh, the Tim Burton ones stand up surprisingly well. Batman Returns is a fantastic Christmas movie. And Michelle Pfeiffer absolutely knocking it out of the park. And Christopher Walken, uh, it's a fantastic movie, but... Quite frankly, none of them will ever better the 1968 Batman, Adam West, Burt Ward, Cesar Romero, Frank Gorshin, Burgess Meredith movie for the simple reason that that contains the scene with Adam West with a cartoon round bomb with a fizzing fuse on the top that he's trying to throw off a pier and he tries to throw it off on one side and there's a kissing couple so he goes somewhere else and he, there's a duck with a set of baby ducklings behind it and he just runs past the camera going some days you just can't get rid of a bomb and it's like that is the approach to comics that i want to see dc return to because that's what works and yes i have the remastered HD uh, box set of the 1966 Batman series on Blu-ray. And it even came with a free Batmobile, toy Batmobile. It's brilliant. And they are so, so good. A rare emotion says, there's an urban myth about George Clooney reimbursing people who came up to him and said they'd seen it. Don't speak of the Joel Schumacher movie, possibly the worst film I've ever seen, and it was free, and I still feel ripped off. I, I've seen worse films than, than the Batman movies by a long stretch, Brotherhood of the Wolf probably being one, and quite frankly, another Frank Miller um, testosterone fest of 300. I literally walked out of 300 when I went and saw that at the, at the cinema. It was just like loads of grown men in leather nappies shouting at each other and it's like why am i watching this what's brotherhood of the wolf says riaco music it is well it's it's apparently based on a on a real proper french legend uh which was the beast of gavordan which was sometime in the Middle Ages, um, something was running amok in the French countryside, eating sheep and wayward villagers and peasants. And um, so the Brotherhood of the Wolf is a kind of gothic horror tale where the famous detective turns up with his um well i'm not sure where he's supposed to come from but it's basically it's a it's mark de cascos 
who is the sort of B B list favourite of kung fu movies. He he's been in so many sort of B and C budget um chop socky martial arts movies. Uh if you saw him you'd go, Oh it's him and uh, he does occasionally crop up in in television shows. I think he's even cropped up in Stargate once or twice. But um yeah, so this guy shows up at the uh, at the castle which is run by a very dodgy family and um it just starts silly and gets sillier and sillier and sillier. Um, Reaka Music says, I like 300 because abs of violence. It was absurd, but I still liked it. Mike Tango Charlie says, The Castle Anthrax? Um, naughty Zoot. No, it's, like I say, saying anything else would would spoil it. But I saw this with a bunch of mates at the View Cinema down at Cribs Causeway. And when the dastardly villain reveals his true form at the the middle of the third act, I just howled with laughter, which I don't think was the reaction that the filmmakers were going for. And it set the whole cinema off. And all, you know, the, the, the big dramatic fight with enhanced special effects um just the whole the whole cinema was just roaring with laughter because it's so badly done uh it's one of those films that is so bad that it becomes good in a really strange sort of way and yes i do now own the dvd of it because i think i found it in a junk shop for like two quid and i thought if ever i get the opportunity to enthuse about just how bad this is with somebody they are going to say i need to see this film and i can say well i just happen to have a copy of it here and we'll watch it so laughing during a horror scene or a sex scene you've done it wrong mike tango charlie says and he's absolutely right i did that during prometheus says riaco music i was just shouting at the screen for most of the second and third acts of Prometheus. Just a truly, truly appallingly badly made and written and executed film. Such a dumb film, says Mike Tango Charlie. Couldn't agree more. Really, really, really bad film. And I, 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 I've seen bits of Alien Covenant because it was... It's been on one of the UK film channels. I think it was on Film 4, and it was like, watch this, and it was like, ooh, spaceships. And then it was like, oh, that's Michael Fassbender. This must be one of those alien movies. And, uh, yeah. Reckon music says, people in the cinema were turning to look at me. That's brilliant. A Rev Motion says, got some great visuals in the first few minutes, if I recall. Uh, I, I, I haven't seen the first few minutes but um yeah it was it looked it looked nice but what was actually going on just my tango charlie says prometheus looks amazing and that's it but yeah terrible says array of emotions i'm gonna call it quits for tonight i think because i am really really i mean i was yawning my head off early and set off various people in the chat yawning as well so i will not inflict that on you anymore I will try and get it together. I hope I will be feeling a bit better for Thursday night's show. Let's let's just say that. Mike Tango Charlie says, I saw Vanishing Point at 2am on one of my first overnight shifts. I thought it was a dream. It has got that sort of air of surreal, surreality to it. Uh, and yeah, it's was one of those regular fixtures on late night TV, usually BBC Two on a Sunday night. And it's like, what's this? This is weird. I'm going to watch this. And always ended up and got to the end. It goes, oh, I remember this. But uh, yeah. So I will love you and leave you. I will see you on Thursday at 
19.30 BST. I'll be back here next Sunday, hopefully with a slightly more enthusiastic and musically inclined attitude and we'll try writing another song live on camera but same bat time same bat channel indeed mike tango charlie i couldn't have put it better myself so whatever you're doing please obey social distancing rules i hope you have a great week whatever you're doing and uh, i will see you next time so until then cheers (laughs) 